Welcome along guys. Well today is a very special day. Not only do we have some sunshine for a ride review, but I've also managed to get my hands on the brand new Aprilia Tirono 660. Now I've got to say a massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending this to me. These are literally brand new out. This bike unfortunately only has 30 miles on it so I'm not going to be able to open it up fully and give it a full spanking but we'll be able to get a very good idea what this bike is like it's obviously based very heavily on the RS660 which I've also got a home in the garage so I'm very fortunate wheels have give, dropped me down the RS660 and the new Toronto 660 so coming up we'll be some direct comparisons between those two models but for this video we're trying out the new Tuono. So stick around, get a cup of tea, and let's see what this old girl is like. <laughs> I'm quite excited. Chopsy, roll the intro. Powering it on, it's got the same TFT as the RX 660. Not not a massive TFT, but you know a nice, easy to read display. Sounds really, really good. Sounds a lot. Keep knocking that on. Keep knocking the high beam on. It sounds a lot like the uh, like the Torino, like the Torino 1100, like the Torino should sound. It sounds a lot like that. Sounds fantastic. So the engine is a 659cc parallel twin. So it's a parallel twin. Basically, the front two cylinders of the RS34 is what they say. The front two cylinders of the RS34. So what better platform than, you know, the amazing RS V4 engine but just the front two bank of cylinders so it's a parallel twin it makes wow this is a bit no one's really quite sure how much power this bike makes at the moment the RS660 makes a hundred horsepower but in the Aprilia documentation about this bike they speak about 95 horsepower apart from the US which gets the full hundred horsepower but people have said that that is only on paper. It really makes 100 horsepower. So let's say 95 horsepower, but possibly 100 horsepower. Um, I don't know why for Europe it would be 95, maybe something to do with the eight, because even at 95 horsepower, it wouldn't be A2 compatible, but whatever, it's between 95 and 100 horsepower. <laughs> Riding position, it's, uh, it's really comfortable. The seat is like sculpted. And I'm a bigger guy, I mean I'm 18 and a half stone-ish, six foot two, and I can actually feel the back of my ass touching the back of the seat. So you don't have much room to move around on the seat, would be my first criticism. It feels a bit like the GSX-S750 from that point of view. You're sort of locked into the seat. You're not gonna have much room to move around, but it's very, very comfortable seating position. Or well, certainly for the first five minutes anyway. Let's report back in an hour or so and see how it is. A change they've made from the RS660 is they brought the front wheel forward. They've, they've changed the rake of the front wheel and they've brought it as close to the radiator as they can to still put a bit of weight over the front. So it's not too far, because your body weight is upright, you're not over the front wheel as much. They've brought the front wheel forward to compensate so you still get a bit of nice feel and feedback from the front wheel. And uh, first impressions is it's got a nice, a really nice flickable feel to it. One thing about this bike, it's only 184 kilos wet, so it's very, very light. And straight away you can tell that. I mean, it's lighter than the Trident. The Trident's 189 kilos wet. So it's very nimble, very light, fantastic sounding engine. I keep knocking the high beam on. That's gonna get irritating. Yeah, I, I like it. Initial impressions is it's got a nice feel, lovely brakes front brakes are really nice 320 mil brembo setup not m50s or anything you know but they're still brembo calipers and they've got a lot of pull 
a lot of pull, a lot of feel, they feel really nice. Brembo master cylinder as well. I'm not quite sure what this guy's doing, is he letting me through? Cheers buddy! Suspension isn't identical to the RS660. It's less adjustability with the suspension on this model. So what you've got is preload and dampening. So not compression dampening and separate rebound dampening, just dampening. So but that's only in one fork leg. It's got about 22 clicks, I've had a play with it, 22 clicks of position on the dampening, but just in one fork leg. So it takes more turns to have an impact because it's only doing it in one leg. Whereas the RX6, the RS660 has the, has, it has the same thing, but in both fork legs. So there's a slight change in the front suspension. The rear suspension is exactly the same. KYB shock, adjustable for preload and dampening again. But I'll show you that on the walk around. The forks are also KYBs as well. The bike is laden with electronic goodies. You've seen the TFT. It's got five different rider modes, including one called individual, where you can go and set it how you want. You can adjust power. There's three different levels of power you can adjust. You can adjust traction control. I think it's got seven or eight different levels of traction control. Uh, engine braking, you can also adjust the engine braking. Lots of uh, ABS is adjustable as well. Three different levels of ABS. One thing with the Tuono over the RS660, the Tuono doesn't have an IMU. The RS660 has the IMU. So even though this has the same electronics as the RS660, they're not lean sensitive based. So if, you, if you're using the ABS when you're cranked over and you slam the front brake on, the bike's not gonna know it's on its side. So they're not gonna be as sophisticated as the RS660 electronics. Oh, she looked a little sneaky little wheelie there. It's got a lot of drive. I think it's 67 Newton meters of torque, which doesn't sound a lot, but when the bike only weighs 183 kilos, that's actually pretty nice. It's fast, you know, I can't really wring its neck yet because the miles are low. We'll put some more miles on this and we will ring its neck before it goes back there's a high beam again that's annoying we will ring its neck before it goes back to wheels but it's got a lovely feel to it definitely sporty the suspension i can feel all of the little bumps in the road i can feel the texture of the tarmac it's, it's definitely geared up for a sporty feel it's not harsh it, it's not really crashing me over the bumps and i can you know it's got lovely feedback you know, Aprilia's always handled fantastically. And I can see this one is, is no exception. A really nice feel. Front brake is very, very nice. Be a little bit careful because these tyres aren't even properly bedded in yet. So don't go too crazy, chops. Yeah, front brake is love. Oh, loads of power on the front. The back is also very good as well. Yeah, I'm impressed actually. It's very nice. The, the position is very comfortable. As I say, the only disadvantage with the position, I am feeling quite locked in. The legs, the pegs are quite far back. It's quite sporty on your legs. I think if you're doing all day in the saddle, you'd have to get off and stretch your legs because it, it, I, I, th I think the, the, the footrest position is exactly the same as the RS660. So it's quite a sporty leg and your legs feel back. You know, so the upper body is quite upright but your legs are in a sporty position. Actually, the riding position feels very, very much like the uh, the full fat 1100 Toronto. Very, very similar riding position. There's a little bit more room in the seat on the 1100, but the actual position once you're sat on it feels very, very similar. The whole bike actually feels quite a lot like the 1100. The sound of it, the handling, feedback from the road I'm beam again what is impressing me is that suspension I was expecting it to feel a little bit budget I think the rear shock does look a bit budget you know it's not fully adjustable but I think they've got it quite a nice feel from it they've got it set in quite a nice sweet spot 
and I'm heavy as well, you know, I'm not your average size, size rider, I'm a big fatty and even with me on it, it feels very nice, even riding it sort of below 7,000 revs, it still really covers distance, it really pulls strongly. Don't do it Mr Volkswagen, stay where you are. So back to electronics, not only do you have TFT, all of those rider modes which are all fully customisable and an individual mode where you can set your own braking and ABS and power levels, it also has, for the first time ever I believe, on an Aprilia, it has a fuel gauge! <laughs> we actually have a fuel gauge! something its big brother does not. Well, there is a new Trider this year, maybe that'll have a fuel gauge as well. I hope so. The tank is more or less identical to the 1100 version. It's not metal, it's like a, a, a polyurethane tank and they never had a fuel gauge. If they've done it on this, I can't see why they can't have done it on the 1100 version. So I'm really pleased to see it's got a fuel... You know, it's sad, isn't it? But I think fuel gauges this day and age, it's essential just to be able to glance down and see how much petrol you have. Oh, it eggs you on. It eggs you on to go fast. A bit like its bigger brother, a bit like that V4 engine. It still gives you that egg on. It still makes you want to push it. Which I love. I mean, the Tuono is all about grins and smiles and poise and handling. All of that is coming through with this one. Very, very nice. Yeah, that, I love it. It's got that fun factor. It's a lot of fun, the weight of it, the brakes. Let's go right up here. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. I'm impressed. I thought I, I thought I might be disappointed. I had a feeling I was going to be a little bit disappointed with this bike. I don't know why. There's high beam again. But I just thought I was going to be a bit disappointed. It wasn't going to live up to the hype. And it's quite nice riding this first before riding the RS660, so I'm, I'm not constantly comparing it to the RS660 because I haven't ridden that yet. So the, I'm riding it as, as a bike on its own, you know. So it'll be interesting to compare this to the RS660, and that'll be the next video I'm doing, a first ride on the RS660, but uh, first impressions on this... High beam again. It is very, very nice, apart from that high beam button, which is too big! I'm going to have to get the cutters out, I'll just cut the end off that. <laughs> There's no quick shifter on this one. The quick shifter is an option. I don't know how much it is, but this one doesn't have it. The RS660, it comes standard. So I think they've, they've taken some things away from this, which are on the RS660, and they've only knocked off 500 quid off the price. So you've lost the IMU, you've lost the quick shifter and blipper, you've lost the ability to disengage the wheelie control from the traction control. I've, I've noticed that on the RS660 you can uh, turn off wheelie control but leave the traction control on. You can't do that on this. That could be something to do because it hasn't got the IMU but there's no option to do that. A few people have asked about vibrations. It, there is a few vibes through the bars, there's a few vibes through the through the tank. You know, it is, you, I can feel some vibes from it but no worse than any other bike which has a like a cross-plane parallel twin motor in. They do create a little bit of vibes. It's not excessive. It's similar to the Africa Twin, the, the Trident I rode the other day. I beam again. It's it's very, very similar to that. So don't let that put you off that it's going to be vibey. It's not. It's absolutely fine. Having that cross-plane crank gives it so much more torque, so much more character, that I'll definitely sacrifice just having a few, a few vibes because of it but it's not excessive, it's absolutely fine. And because the bike is literally brand new, that could get better as the miles go on it anyway. Oh, it could get worse. <laughs> could go either way. I love the tank on the Aprilia. This bulges out the tank here. So if you're on track with this, you can tuck and lock your legs under the tank for you need to get your knee down and stuff. It's very, very nicely set up, the Ergos. It's also got cruise control, I believe. Let's see how we work the cruise control. Down. No. Nope. Cross it across again. Yeah, there we go. Cruise control. Standard. 
This is a uh, copra. Is that a policeman or is he just a polite vest wearing? Buffoon. Right, let's find somewhere to do a quick pullover and we'll do a little bit of a walk around for you. This looks quite pleasant down here, doesn't it? So there she is, the new Tuono 660. Certainly looks the part. Looks sporty, looks modern. I like the, I, mean, I really do like the front end on this. I think it looks very, very nice. Let's turn the lights on. I really like the integrated like DRLs. So not only if you've got the DRLs, you've also got the indicators. And that seem when you indicate, the DRLs go out on that side. That's quite clever. It's indirect sunlight, so it's quite hard to see. There you go, flashing, and the DRLs are on that side, but they've turned off the side the indicator's on. You stop the indicator, they come on again. Starting at the bottom, we have the Brembo calipers, and they're actually a, a full monoblock caliper. I've just had a look at them. They're not they're a monoblock caliper, so that is quite nice. And then we've got the KYB forks, black anodizing, 20, 320 millimeter Brembo discs. Very nice, and that lovely red paintwork on the wheels. The 659cc motor. Apparently, as I say, the front bank of the RSV4 engine, but it can't be exactly half the capacity because this is 659cc. The uh, full tone is 1100, so this would be 500c, 550cc. So they've obviously increased the capacity a little bit, adjusted the bore, adjusted the stroke. It's got a different cylinder head as well, apparently. And you can see stainless steel exhaust sort of running down here at the front. I quite like the look of having the exhaust showing there. And of course, you've got a little belly pan in typical Tuono style. You know, they're sort of a semi-fared bike, so you've got a little belly pan as well. Exhaust is all under slung, all sort of a little cover over it to hide all the gubbins, looks quite neat. The rear shock, also KYB, and directly mounted, you know, there's no linkages, it's just a directly mounted shock. To adjust the rebound, you've got to take this panel off, you can't get to the rebound without taking this panel off, and to get this panel off, you've got to take the seat off. To take the seat off, you've got to take all the rear racking off. So if you're going to do any sort of rebound adjustment, you, you, you have to get this panel off. So I don't know why they've just not put a little hole in here where you can get a screwdriver through to get to the, the rebound adjustment on the shock. Controls are nice, there's a, there's a good feel to the controls, but the, I say it doesn't have quite the same quality as the 1100, I don't think, the switch gear, as it looks a little bit cheaper. If you remove the seat, underneath the seat, you've actually got an inbuilt uh, luggage rack. You know, so you can put bungees on here, <laughs> You've actually got a little rug luggage rack on the back, which I think is an absolutely fantastic idea. What a practical thing to add to the bike. You know, I don't know if you can get like an Aprilia luggage, which just clips directly into here. Maybe you can, but you could even just bungee something on, use like a Krieger tail pack or whatever would go on there. But that's fantastic. There's no under seat storage, but there never is anyway. So why not have like a rack there? So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really quite impressed with that. Very nice idea, I like that. No, I've got it filthy. Let's have a look at that dashboard. Very, you know, again, that is more or less identical to the 1100. The layout's different. That's the different modes in the menu. Aprilia engine management, Aprilia engine braking, Aprilia traction control, Aprilia wheelie control. So it's just on or off on the wheelie control. Go along, along, along. So you, I can't stop to turn the anti-wheelie off. I think I have to go that take the traction down to zero and then the anti wheelie comes off. So there's, there's no way to have the anti wheelie off but leave the traction on. So let's put the traction on four now because it is warming up a little bit. Aprilia. Really nice. Right, that's enough faffing. Let's get back on the road. <laughs> Steering lock is okay. Not absolutely fantastic, but uh, perfectly acceptable. I must admit the throttle response is spot on. They've nailed the throttle response. Really nice throttle response. I'm going to put it into individual mode now. And I can tell an individual where it's on number one for the engine. <laughs> Management, whatever it means. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lot more snappy. With that now on mode one, you can see it's much more lively on the pickup. And I think if you're in traffic or in town, 
that is a lot is a lot more snatchy on number one to give you instant performance so there's definitely a difference between the maps let's try the commuter this is the softest version yeah that that is that's fine now that's perfectly smooth then you're bringing it in and let's do the other mode which was the dynamic this is in between the two which is quite a nice mode actually I'm impressed I'm actually very impressed with this I was expecting this to feel like a you know not a proper bike you know a budget bike it doesn't there's obviously a little bit of cost cutting on it which is a bit of a shame the suspension you know a tiny bit you know, with the adjustment on it but the actual feel of it is very nice I like where they brought that wheel in closer to the front of the radiator to, to reduce that rake because you haven't got as much weight over the front I think that's really worked and despite being in this upright position I'm getting very good feedback from the front wheel I can tell exactly what that front wheel's doing I can feel it going over every little bit of texture of tarmac and I'm not talking about in a jarry way I'm just talking about in a sporty feedback point of view which is exactly what you want you want to know how much level of grip you've got through that front tyre and I can tell it and I think they've done a fantastic job of, uh, of getting that on a bike which is so upright with so little weight over the front by bringing that front wheel in and that also makes it very sharp of course what that can bring in is you know a bit of instability on faster corners and stuff and perhaps a bit of a uh, bit of that so um, yeah it's got no steering damper so whether if you're on higher speed corners and you hit bumps in the roads or potholes that could unsettle the bike that would be the only downside with uh, giving that bringing that front wheel in a little bit but we'll see we've got some faster bends up here let's have a look but they are quite smooth bloomies blimey not seen that place in a while so here we have a slightly faster corner let's see how the front end feels around here and the see a little bit tuck your leg under that tank give you some stability i really like that yeah, it feels fine these are quite smooth though and we've got bloody cars in the way bloody cars spoiling the fun yeah it feels you know from that you know, very brief test not exactly high speed at that high speed and these roads are quite smooth but it feels fine it's great it's a lovely bike i mean it's priced at 97 so as i've mentioned that is quite expensive for a naked but it has a premium feel to it it's an Italian naked, you know, you, you, you're going to spend a little bit extra. Get on the motorway, let's see what she's like at 70 miles an hour. Let's like move again. 70 miles an hour, you're getting a bit of wind, of course it's a naked. But I think that screen is actually directing more wind at your sort of shoulder helmet area. I'm sure unlike the Trident without any weather protection, that air is just spread more over the front half of your body it definitely does seem to be directed quite a lot towards your upper shoulder area with that little cow sort of half fared I guess you'd call this wouldn't you a half fared bike but yeah it's fine cruise is lovely I've just got my eye on this police car which is coming up the outside probably wondering what I've got hanging off the back of the bike but uh, yeah there he is morning officer or afternoon officer nothing going on here sir yeah here is calm there's no wind here at all I can feel the wind about here so that sort of chest level here so you, what means is you're getting all that air which you would have been getting here you're getting more of it up here instead so you're getting more pushing higher up your chest so almost you know why bother with a little screen just have it all spread over your whole frontal area of course in the rain it means you'll be getting wet all over whereas I probably wouldn't be getting wet around my belly area highlights for me are the brakes the brakes are very good the engine is also a massive highlight it's a lovely engine of course I'm probably always missing a good middleweight or, <laughs> or any sort of middleweight apart from the Dosodoro you know there was nothing you could get your Aprilia you could get your 
Toro 125, but if you want to upgrade from that, you had to go to the 1100. There was nothing in the middle. So they had a lot of young riders coming on, you know, riding the 125 versions, and then they had to move away from the brand. And, you know, you, you got no sort of brand loyalty there then. So this was very, very much overdue from Aprilia, and I think it's fantastic they've now got this 660 platform to keep, you know, that, that, that people pass their test, you can get an A2 version of this bike. I don't think you can actually make this A2 because it's too powerful, it's too light. You have to get an A2 version of it, and it's the same on the RS660. But it's fantastic that you know, those riders can now stay with Aprilia. And uh, I think it will really help Aprilia as a brand. As I say, highlights, the engine's fantastic. The chassis is also very nice. The brakes are very, very good. You know, the styling, I really like the styling. It's very modern. I wasn't, you know, I like those DRLs at the front. I wasn't sure at first, maybe. Maybe it was a bit too futuristic. But it takes a little while for your brain to adjust with these things. But I really like it. The finish of it is very good. It's a bit plasticky in places would be my only criticism. Like the side panels are plasticky. I think this, you know, this red is just red plastic. I don't think it's paint. I think it's red plastic with stickers on. The only other criticism being a larger guy, you're locked in on the seat quite a lot. You can't move around back and forward on the seat. You're very locked in. But I've been riding this for an hour plus and I'm in perfect comfort. There's no, it's, it's very well padded the seat, so you may be limited on movement, but it is very padded. So all in all, very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Is it better than the RS660? That's the question, and that's what we'll be looking at next time. Well, next time I'll be first riding the RS660. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. See what I think to the, uh, ooh, Street Triple. See what I think to the RS660, or was it Street Triple? Um, never mind that, <laughs> it put me right off there. So next up I will be riding the RS660, we'll do a little first ride on that machine, and then following up from that we'll do a direct back-to-back -back comparison with this and the RS660. On my own, we can't have Greg involved because of uh, lockdown and meeting people and all that, so you're just going to have to put up with me doing a back-to-back -back with this and the RS660, and then also I'm going to do a comparison between this and the Triumph Street Triple R, which is very similar priced bike. I think it's actually slightly cheaper than this. I think it's 9,100. More power than this, but you know, slightly older design, perhaps obviously a triple. But thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. Massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this and the RS660. Absolutely incredible to get these bikes this early, especially the Toronto, it's only just come out, they've given it to me straight away, so massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles, if you want to ride this bike, give them a ring, this is their demo, this will be back with them very, very soon, and book it and ride it yourself, let me know what you think to it, but thanks guys, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you soon, cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Never mind, get a up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> Oh, oh. Yeah.